Hello, in this demonstration I'm going to show you how to create V carvings from photographs using ArtCam Express. Here you can see the example that I'm going to be showing you how to do today. First thing that I'm going to do is go to File and I'm going to close the model. Now if you take a look on the right hand side you can see that I'm just using the basic ArtCam Express to do this so I'm not using any modules this is all included within the basic version of ArtCam Express. Now the first thing that I need to do is to open up a photograph or an image and I can do this one of two ways one way would be to just grab the image and drag it into ArtCam or I could go to open model and then choose my image here. Now I don't want to double click on this or press open just yet because what I need to do is to turn this image into a relief and I can do that by setting the maximum Z range here. So let's change that to three millimeters and then I can select open and what this will do it will automatically create a relief from this image so here you can see it's put the height in at three millimeters the image size I'm going to change this so it's quite large let's say 900 millimeters and select OK so here you can see the image that it's opened picture of a lady here. If I go to the 3D view and take a plan view of this you can see that this has given me a 3D relief and what I'm going to do is to run a V-bit over this by using the machine relief toolpath. So if I go to toolpaths now and select to create a machine relief toolpath I'm going to machine the whole of the relief and I'm going to select here to select my finishing tool and I'm going to come down to my V carving tools that I have. Now these are all just the standard tools that are in ArtCam's library. You can add tools to this if you wish. I'm just going to be using a 32mm 120 degree V bit for this. So if I click select and if I select here this will give me a drop down menu with all of the parameters for this tool and the step over I'm going to make this quite large to begin with so let's say 12 millimeters and I'm also going to change the angle that this is going to be machined at so it gives me a nice effect so let's just do this at 45 degrees I'm going to define the material so let's say that this material is going to be 10 millimeters thick and I'm going to set the material Z0 to the top and press OK and that will create my material for me just take a plan view of that and select calculate now so that's calculated all of the toolpaths for me so what I can do now is right click on toolpaths and then select simulate all toolpaths and this will give me a preview of what's going to be machined before I send it to the machine so here you can see the tool running over the material and there you can see the finished piece. Now this is losing quite a bit of detail this is because the step over is quite large. Now there are a few things that are important when doing this type of machining and that is the angle that you are machining at also the angle on the tool the step over which is directly linked to the angle on the tool and also the depth of the actual relief. So what I'm going to do is change the step over now just so it adds a bit more detail to this part. So if I just change the step over to 
something really small, let's say three millimeters, and then select calculate now. Now if I reset the simulation and then select simulate all toolpaths, this will give me another simulation. Now you can see that the if I just zoom in that the toolpath is quite close to each other. Uh, this is because we put a small step over in this. Now as you can see this is probably taking out a little bit too much detail so the actual V bit where the angle is is actually machining over the top of the next step over. So if I just let this run out and you can see what this looks like at the end. So straight away you can see that it's taken a lot of the detail out. So you need to find a balance between a small step over and keeping the detail to a larger step over and losing the detail. So what I'm going to do is do something in between the 12mm step over and the 3mm step over. So let's do 8mm and then calculate this. So that has recalculated the toolpath for me. So now I'm going to do exactly the same thing, reset the simulation and then simulate all of the toolpaths. And now you'll see that this gives me a lot more detail even though that the step over is greater than it was before. So you can see this is giving me more detail. So I'm quite happy with that. So what I'm going to do is to create a vector to use as the machining boundary. So if I go to the 2D view and let's turn the contrast down slightly, what I'm going to do here is to create a vector around the outside. So create a vector around the outside here, like so. It's not got to be critical. And let's draw some smooth polylines here. Let's come up to here. Let's go around this hair here. So I'm just doing this very rough at the moment. as you can see. I can also press shift on the keyboard and the middle mouse button which will pan that over whilst I'm drawing. Quite useful. So let's come right out of the top here and come over like so and down this side of the head. and then I can finish up at the end here. Now you can also see that I've got this section here. What I'm going to do is to just draw around here. Like so. And what I'm going to do now is select all of these vectors to act as a boundary for the carving. So I'm going to change the area to the machine from whole relief to selected vectors. 
and I'm going to recalculate that. I can now close the machine relief, go to the 3D view. Here you can see it's just calculated the toolpaths in red, just in the area that I specified. So I'm going to reset the simulation again and simulate all of the toolpaths. So you can see that it's using this vector that I just created as a boundary. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is to machine the background. And I'm going to do this by using a different angle. So go back to the 2D view. And what I'm going to do is create a square like so. And I'm going to use the Trim Vectors tool. Make sure that I've got Auto Join on. And I'm going to trim this section here off and also this section here. So then it gives me the opposite to what I've just machined. So if I go back to the 3D view, select all of my vectors and I'm going to create a new machine relief now. I'm going to do this over the selected vectors and the finishing options going to use the same tool. This time I'm going to do a negative. Let's do this, let's say, minus 60 degrees. So it's a completely different angle to what we used previously. And the step over, let's make this a little smaller. Let's say six millimeters. And I'm going to calculate this. I can then close the machine relief toolpath and then just simulate this new toolpath. So there you can see the finished piece. So thank you for joining this demonstration. I hope that you found it useful and hopefully I will see you on the next one. Goodbye.